One of the things that I've learned the hard way by trial and error in my current job is the organization of digital files, folders and other assets. Initially when I started off with my job, I like everyone else had no strategy or plan about creating a directory structure or a filing system to save my work. My daily work would be saved randomly in arbitrary folders with random names scattered all over. My only goal being to finish the work in that moment. Now over time these files and folders started growing and piling up. I only realized that I had a problem when the following events became regular occurrences. I would be sitting at my desk putting some finishing touches to some important project when ding a message would come from my boss. Hey can you find that project we scrapped 3 years ago? I think you and Prince were working on it. We are thinking about picking it back up again. For me, requests like these always used to result in a moment of dread followed by a wasted day searching through my pile of files and folders. That is until I learned how to avoid all this stress and wasted time. How? With an organized file and folder system. Hey guys, my name is Sunil Chauhan and in this video, I am going to share with you my strategies of organizing files, folders and documents using a filing system and a directory structure which is optimized for ease of use, searchability and reusability. Never again will you have to subject yourself to the dread and stress if you follow through the strategies I share with you in this video. Your colleagues will respect you, your superiors will appreciate you and love you for your organizational capabilities and overall you will be more confident and productive at your work. So let's first discuss the goals that our digital filing system that we will be creating for ourselves should be serving us. Number 1. It should be easy to file. You don't want your filing system to be a hierarchical maze. You want it to be fast and easy to save your files so that your system does not cause friction. Number 2. It should be easy to search and find. You want your filing system to make it easy for you to find your files and folders you need either by poking through the folders or using Windows search. Number 3. Reusability Whenever possible, you want to use reusable templates and naming convention, both of which supports the previous two goals. Now there are some simple rules to get started with the organization of your files, folders and documents. Number 1. Don't put all your files on desktop. Your desktop is supposed to be clean and display that high resolution, gorgeous wallpaper you have got going on. It should contain that recycle bin and this PC shortcut icon and that's about it. I have seen people having their documents and stuff all scattered and hanging on their desktop screen. Not only is this a bad organization habit, but it also slows down your PC. On some occasion, however, it can be handy to put a file or two on your desktop for temporary storage if you are referring to it regularly and don't need to file it just yet. But please don't make it a habit to just lazily save everything on your desktop. Number 2. Limit Folder Creation When creating folders, think minimal. Most files can fit somewhere in your hierarchy if you have done a good job of initially mapping it out. You don't want your filing system to be a huge hierarchical maze. The rule number third is to name your files and folders strategically. One of our goals for organizing our files is that they should be easy to find. A key way to accomplish this is by putting some thought into how to name your files and folders. It doesn't have to be complicated when naming your files, you just have to keep the future you in mind. Here's what this means. Try to imagine a circumstance in which you will be searching for this file you are naming now in the future. What words are you likely going to use to try to find this file? To explain this further, let me show you the file naming convention I use at my current organization to save customer invoices for instance. As you can assume, I house all the invoices inside the invoices folder. Now let me come to the file naming part. So basically we sell our products on our website and three e-commerce platforms like eBay, Etsy and Amazon. 
So here's my strategy to name the invoices file. Each invoice has a sequence number which forms the very first part of the invoice file name. Let's for instance say that it is the invoice number 1920. So the very first part of the file name will be as I then see where the sale was made. If it was made on website, I'll use web as the second part of the file name. If it was made on eBay, I'll instead use eBay as the second part of the file name. And if it was used on, uh, if it was sold on Amazon, I will use AMZ for Amazon. Or if it was made on Etsy, I will use ETSY for Etsy. So. If the sale was suppose the sale was made on website, I'll use web as the next part. And if the sale was made on eBay, I'll use eBay as the next part. If the sale was made on Amazon, I will instead use A M Z for Amazon and if the sale was made on Etsy I'll say E T S Y Etc. So this forms the first half of my file name invoice file name basically. Now the third part of this file name will be the name of the customer itself. So the third part of this file naming convention is the name of the customer itself. Now if the sale comes through our website, it has a unique order number which forms the fourth part of my file invoice file naming convention. On eBay, Amazon and Etsy, each customer has a unique username which is why what I use as the fourth part of my file naming convention if the sale was made on these platforms. So, for instance, if the sale was made on eBay, I'll use eBay here. And then this fourth part of the file name, which is order number in case of the sale made on website, it will be username in case of the eBay. So it will be customer username. So for instance, this customer's username is C-L-A-R-I-E, Clary19. So this will be her username as the fourth part as the fourth part of my file naming convention. Now over these years these invoices have grown into thousands and the way this file naming convention helps me is that I can find the invoice of any customer within few seconds using the search of Windows File Explorer. Sometimes a customer would return after two or three years complaining about the product or wanting to make a new purchase. At such time, finding these old invoices becomes critical for us and this file naming convention comes in really handy for us. I can either use the customer name, customer's username, invoice number or the order number to quickly search for the file I am looking for. Now let me give you a tour of my PC so that you understand my organizational strategies for maximum productivity. As you can see I have a clean desktop screen with a nice windows HD wallpaper and only recycle bin and this PC icon on it. Now for me everything starts with the windows start button. I can press it on my keyboard and notice I even have my applications all organized in the windows start menu. I mostly use Adobe Creative Suite apps and Microsoft Office apps which are all organized and grouped, grouped in one place at the top. Then I have some other apps group like film and audio all grouped in one place together here. Then I have my PC apps all grouped here together and some FTP and SSH client apps as well as code editors grouped here together. This organization basically helps me find my frequently used apps quite easily. Now let's move on to check my drives in the Windows File Explorer. Notice I have named the D drive as business and F drive as personal. 
so at the root level itself i have created a clear separation so all my business related documents are housed inside the business drive and personal documents are housed inside the personal drive now let me take you further inside my personal drive notice i have folders called family health and wellness music pictures videos inside my personal drive aside from these primary folders i have two other folders called at the rate inbox and z archive i will explain the purpose of these two folders in a moment before that let me take you inside my family folder so inside my family folder i have dedicated folders with the name of each of my family member so any document that relates to a particular member of my family has to go in that folder with that member's name so for instance let's check my brother anurag's folder now inside this folder the naming convention i use for sub folders is pretty interesting and important as it will keep things organized the best possible way the way i create sub folders in here is that i have a windows batch file at the very top which when double clicked creates a new folder with current timestamp as the folder name now after this timestamp i add a name that describes the content of this folder the benefit of having current timestamp at the beginning of the folder name is that i can toggle the folder arrangement in ascending or descending order according to the timestamp this way i know what document was created the most recent and where it exists so i have this timestamp batch file sitting inside each folder named after my family member whenever i have to work on a document or something for my family member i will quickly run this batch file to create a folder with current timestamp as the first part of the folder name and the second part will be something describing the content of the folder this keeps things nicely organized and makes it easy for me to find something later on when needed I would recommend you use this same strategy I used to create subfolders inside your primary folders using this timestamp batch file. You can download this timestamp.bat file from the link in the description section of this video. Now let's check out one of my other primary folder called health and wellness inside the personal drive. You see I am using the same strategy to organize my documents inside this folder. I have my timestamp batch file at the very top and every time I have to create some new document, I will create a new folder for that using this timestamp batch file which when double clicked creates a new folder with current timestamp as the first part of the folder name. I can then choose the second part of this folder name as something that describes the content of this folder. Let's take a look for instance at one of the subfolders in here named Anytime Fitness Membership which was created on 15th Feb 2021 at 11:27 p.m. You see inside this folder as well I am naming the documents with similar strategy. First I have a date in year month and day format then a name describing the document this way when i have the document sort order set to descending in the detail view of the file explorer i have my latest document on the very top over time as these folders inside my primary folder grow or the documents and file inside these folders grow it will be easier for me to find them either by windows explorer search or by poking through the folders okay now let me explain the purpose of at the rate inbox and z archive folder that i have besides the primary folders in my personal drive suppose there comes a situation wherein i have to work on a document that i know will go in my personal drive but i am not yet sure as to which primary folder inside the personal drive will i be placing this document in so in such situations i'll just place it in the at the rate inbox folder and later on when i have time to think i'll place this document in a correct primary folder 
or create altogether a new primary folder for it if the situation demands. So in essence, the at the rate inbox folder acts as a temporary placeholder for files and documents for which I am not yet decided on which folder to call its home. The next important folder that I have in my file system is the Z archive folder. The Z archive folder will house all the files and folders that I feel are no longer much important but which I will still not want to get completely rid of. This helps me to clear up the clutter in my primary folders and yet retain the copy of folders and files which are relatively unimportant now but may be needed sometime in future again. Now let's take a look at my business directory. Here again like my personal directory, I have two additional folders named at the rate inbox and Z archive besides the primary folders. The at the rate inbox folder is used to store any document temporarily that I have not yet decided as to where it will eventually find its home inside my primary folders. The Z archive is used to store any files or folders that are no longer much important but I would still not want to get rid of them completely. So to free up the clutter from primary folders, I might just move them to the Z archive. Now to order primary folders inside my business drive, I use numbers from 1 through 10. 1 being the highest priority folder, so it appears at the top after the at the rate inbox folder. So the first primary folder is for my business Sunil Chauhan Creative Web Consulting. Let's go inside it and you will see some subfolders like branding, marketing, SSL, website backups, website content, etc. All of which houses a specific file and asset related to my website. Coming back to the root of the business drive, the next primary folder is the clients. Inside this folder, I use the same strategy as discussed while going through the folders in my personal drive. I have a timestamp batch file at the very top which when double clicked creates a new folder with current timestamp as the first part of the folder name. So when a new client comes in I just double click the timestamp file to create a new folder for him. The folder has current timestamp as the first part of its name the second part of this folder's name will be the client's name. This way the latest client or the project always stays organized at the top. The other primary folders that I have inside my business directory are finance, video production, code practice, design practice, motion graphics practice, etc. Inside each of these primary folders, I use the same strategy to create subfolders as discussed in my client's folder a moment ago. So this basically wraps up the details of strategies I use to stay organized and avoid getting lost in my own pile of files and folders. I hope this video was able to deliver some valuable tips that you were looking to organize your files and folders. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you found this video helpful and do ring the bell icon to get notified of my future videos. I wish you a year full of prosperity and productivity. Stay organized and stay productive and I'll catch you in my next video.